Okay, nomenclature of molecular compounds. We've done a whole lot of work with the crossdown method and now we are going to forget all about that. Molecular compounds are made of non-metals only. So if you recall, the staircase separates the metals from the non-metals. And just a quick reminder, right, that we're working now with compounds that contain non-metals only. Remember hydrogen way over here in group one is also a non-metal. So we're going to use the prefix method. Remember those prefixes? We saw them in the hydrates lesson. So mono, di, tri, tetra, and so on, all the way down to deca. There's one important tip to remember here, and that is that mono, the very first prefix here, can only be used for the second element. And so if there's only going to be one of the first element, we're not going to use the prefix mono there. We won't use a prefix at all. The structure of these the structure of these names again involves two words. The first is in the name of the non-metal, no change in the spelling, and the second we'll see an IDE ending on that second non-metal. And so we have carbon dioxide. So symbol for carbon is C. There's no prefix here, which means that there's a one as our subscript. So we don't use the word prefix mono for the first element. Dioxide, when we have that two, right, that tells us that there are two oxygens. And so we're not going to show subscripts of one. What's going on here? We're not going to show subscripts of one, and so we'll have our final answer of CO2. And that's a molecule you've been familiar with for a while, I'm sure. Sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, so we see the sulfur, symbol S, hexafluoride, we write the symbol for fluorine, and then interpret that prefix. Hexa is six, and so we have SF6. Okay, try part C on your own and check back with the video. Okay, and so we have dinitrogen, so looking at the di tells us we'll need a two here, and monoxide, and so the mono tells us that we'll have a one. And so the subscript of one I'm going to omit. So the final answer, N2O. Okay, now I'm giving you the formulas, so you need to come up with the names. So again, use the subscripts and interpret those for a prefix. So we see a one here, or it was omitted, we'll fill it in. So there's a one, so we don't say monocarbon, just carbon. And then the four is tetra, and we change the ending to IDE. So carbon tetrachloride. Try E and F and check back with the video. Okay, and so we have S2O3. The two prefix corresponding is di, and three is tri. We have disulfur trioxide, and then dinitrogen pentaoxide. We drop the A, and that becomes pentoxide. I actually would not mark that wrong as a spelling error if you did have the A, but you'll get the hang of these. Um, if you know how to say it, it helps you spell it. So disulfur trioxide versus dinitrogen pentoxide. So you'll notice I'm not pronouncing the A. You might have a triiodide. So you'll notice tri, iodide. I'm saying both eyes. I'm using both eyes, and so you'll need to include both. Okay, so just a refresher that we had some common molecular compounds. So those showed up on table four in your um, introductory video for the nomenclature, and you have it in your reference handout. So, so those common compounds, remember we had water, methane, ammonia, ozone, hydrogen peroxide. And so these should be ones that you have memorized at this point. Methane is natural gas. That's what's running through your gas pipes if you have a gas furnace or a gas stove. Ammonia is often found in cleaners and you may smell it in um, certain hair treatments. Ozone, very helpful. Uh, up in the atmosphere where it absorbs ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Um, not very good at ground level for us. Uh, we find respiratory problems um, come with ground level ozone. And H2O2 is a common drugstore product, hydrogen peroxide. 
which can be used as a disinfectant. Uh, just to comment here that this is actually, hydrogen peroxide is actually, um, we write the formula following the rules for ionic compounds. It's the hydrogen ion and it's the peroxide polyatomic ion. And when we cross the numbers down, we get a 1 and a 2. And so we can't cancel the 2 and the 1, so we finish up with H2O2. But I'd just like to remind you that this, is, this was the cross down method, right? And that we, you know, do not use the cross down method for molecular compounds. So this really was an exception here at the end. I just wanted you to understand that. Now we do not, you'll notice in this, in the way we've done this lesson, we do not reduce the, we do not reduce, so if you had N2O4, we would not reduce the 2 and the 4. So we do reduce with ionic compounds, but we do not reduce with molecules. And the reason being, N2O4 is a particle that's made up of two nitrogens and four oxygens. And when it, without getting into all of the bonding there, I'll just draw these lines here to indicate that those atoms are um, attracted to one another. And they form a molecule of N2O4. Now, if you have um, sodium chloride, what we have there is positive and negative ions of sodium and chloride that are attracted to one another. And essentially, they form this incredibly large crystal structure we call a crystal lattice. So imagine that we have an incredibly, unimaginably large number of these ions all arranged in this cubic structure. When we communicate the formula, we really want to describe essentially one formula unit. And one formula unit of this crystal or crystal lattice is why we reduce to lowest terms. So although I've drawn in this picture multiple positive and negative ions, multiple sodium and chloride ions, we write the formula as NaCl. There's, it's really telling us the ratio of sodium to chloride ions in that crystal lattice. Whereas for N2O4, we write that formula as N2O4, and that, that is then made, that is a molecule. And so we have we have a molecule of N2O4. We don't want to reduce that because we want to show the actual particle. So one formula unit of the, of the crystal lattice that's been drawn here, so this whole thing here is, is the crystal lattice. So what's the ratio of positive to negative ions in lowest terms? Well, one to one, and so we have NaCl. Okay, last bit of this video. Although it doesn't quite fit because these are not compounds, these are diatomic elements, they are still elements, non-metal elements, that actually happen to be stable with two of those atoms bonded together. And so the formula of hydrogen, which happens to be a gas at room temperature, is not just H, it's H2. And so the name of H2 is just the name of the element, hydrogen, and if you're given the state there, then you'll know it's hydrogen gas. Now, in our second unit, you'll learn what you need to know in terms of the states, um, and so right now it's just knowing that which are the diatomic elements, there are seven of them, and knowing that we write their formulas as H2, or whatever the symbol is with a two subscript, and we just use the name of the element. It's not dihydrogen, it's just hydrogen. So recall that an element has only one type of atom present. Not one atom, but one type of atom. And so when it's only hydrogen, then you're not going to use the prefix, so just hydrogen. Okay, so hydrogen gas is diatomic. So are the two gases in the air that we breathe. N2 and O2, nitrogen and oxygen gas. And then we have all the halogens. So F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. And so these are the seven 
diatomic elements. Again, we just use the name of the element. So there's no prefix. There's only one type of atom present. Now, as far as states go, fluorine and chlorine are both gases. Bromine's a liquid and iodine is a solid. So you'll see that the halogens get more dense as you move down the group. Okay, so in grade nine or 10, or 10 I guess, teachers um, sometimes use the acronym Hofbrinkel. You'll notice that the spelling of Hofbrinkel actually covers all seven elements. Hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. I prefer personally to look at a periodic table, but you can remember it however you like. And I find the hydrogen here. Then I go to the two gases that make up our atmosphere, the air that we breathe, and then I follow all the way down group 17. And that's where I find those seven. Okay, so keep those in mind when you're writing equations later.